Hey guys, uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about uh, the EPL Premier League last day uh, of the season. It's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 game slate. Uh, it's a really rare 10 game slate. And they always do this every year in EPL um, just to kind of prevent any, uh, you know, uh, you know, any funny business um, on the last day for the standings and all that. Um, so they all play at the same time. So it's a huge slate. Um, as, and as you can see, there's, you know, Arsenal, there's Chelsea, there's Liverpool and Man City, Tottenham. So lots of great teams. Um, so, you know, really pick and choose what you want to stack. Um, probably based on the, uh, you know, um, the goal scoring upside. Um, and yeah, let's just take a look at the standings right now um, and, and see if there are some motivations for these teams. I know in the top five or top seven, let's go with top seven. I know that um, Man City and Liverpool, you see the <laughs> 90 points and 80. So like really it's, it's one of the rare seasons where the champion regular season champion hasn't been announced yet or decided yet um, because I mean, Man City and Liverpool are playing, like I said, um, Man City is playing against Aston Villa and Liverpool is playing against Wolverhampton. So really both teams should try their best because I mean, the trophies at um, they're, they're really like vying for the trophy with this game, last game of the season. So if Man City wins and Liverpool wins, they both win, then Man City, Man City will win because they're up by one point right now. Um, so we'll see. You know, I think you have to have Man City stack and Liverpool stack at some point. Um, and if you're playing a lot of the lineups, yeah, I mean, I think I would definitely choose a lot of Man City and Liverpool stacks and kind of find the cheap guys and, you know, and other, for other teams. So that's kind of the general strategy where I'm at um, because of the tight, tight race between the championship race between Man City and Liverpool. And then after that, I think Chelsea and Tottenham, I mean, they're close to each other. And I know Tottenham is trying to, I mean, Arsenal is trying to um, take over Tottenham spot, but so, yeah, I mean, Tottenham is going to try their best as well. Um, and then at the bottom of the standings, it's really based on if you want to, if you are in the bottom three teams in the standings in the EPL, you're going to get relegated to the, to, you know, to the tier below, basically like they're going to get relegated and demoted to the minor league, so to speak. And obviously you don't want that. <laughs> they want to stay in the EPL next season. So right now you have Norwich, Watford and Lees and Norwich and Watford are for sure relegated already. You see, they only have 23, 22 points. And Watford and Norwich, let's see who they play. Tonham, Watford against Chelsea. So both of those opponents have favorable matchups, I think, because because Norwich and Watford don't really have anything to play for. They're, they, they've already been relegated, and you see the form. I mean, they are really bad. And Leeds and Burnley are tied for the last relegation spot um and let's see who they play Burnley and Leeds are gonna play very hard to not get relegated Burnley is playing against Newcastle okay that's doable and then Leeds is playing against Brentford that's doable too so yeah I mean that's gonna be an interesting game I think too as well for Burnley and Leeds respectively um, so really those teams have the motivation to, uh, try hard tomorrow. Now, if I want to, I'll just kind of quickly go over, there's so many games. I'll quickly go over each, uh, my favorite plays in each game and I'll make it quick because there's so many games. So in the Arsenal versus Everton, um, for Arsenal, Arsenal's a favorite at home for Arsenal. It starts with Saka and then Martinelli. And then after that, it's anybody's game for GPP. I think even Odegaard is not a must for me. And then for Everton, it starts always starts with Anthony Gordon and then Damari Gray if he plays. I don't think he's going to play. 
but Anthony Gordon, Damari Gray, and then after that, Richarlison, and then Cheap Striker in DCL, Dominic Calvert Lewin. Um, really, those are the only ones that I'll be interested in, other than maybe Michael Lenko is like a cheap fullback, but that's about it. And Brentford, Leeds, like I said, Leeds have a lot to play for here. So I, I'll go with Leeds first. Rafinha is their engine. Um, you know, their team goes as he goes. And then after that, it's all strictly GPP. Uh, much, not many floor, not many players have floors um, on that team. And then on the other side of the matchup, Brentford, it starts with Christian Eriksen. Um, he's been quite a um, good find, good gem that they found, and you know, in as in the free agency market. Um, so Christian Eriksen, and then after that is GPP Ivan Tony, um, their strikers and forwards Brian Mboemo. Erickson and Mboemo probably have the highest floor, in my opinion. And then after that, maybe Rico Henry and Ivan Tony, but that's about it. Yoan Wisa, he's been okay. I mean, he's been scoring, you see, the last two games. So, I mean, I think he will be a good cheap striker if you are playing GPP. Brighton versus West Ham. This is going to be a boring game, I think. BHA have a pretty good defense. I mean, they hang their hat on their defense. And then West Ham, uh, you're right. West Ham has a lot to play for here, actually, to kind of go into the top six. If Man U loses, that can happen. So West Ham, I think they're going to push hard. Start with Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen, and then after that, it's all GPP, in my opinion. Lanzini, Fornals, and then Antonio, they're all relying on goals, unless Ben Rama starts, but I think he's doubtful. So really, Bowen is the only one with the floor. And then maybe after that, Cresswell and Kufal have the highest floors after that. And then after that, it's all direct, strictly GPP. And then for BHA, it starts with uh, Pascal Gross. I know he's been playing well lately. Um, and then McAllister. So really, those are the only two that I'll be interested in, unless Sally March plays well. But Sally March, is not, I'm not a huge fan of him, so... But Trussard has been playing well. You see the ratings there, and then he's been scoring a lot. So really, I guess I'll add Trussard to that list. Um, Gross, McAllister, and then Trussard. All right, Burnley versus Newcastle. Like I said, Burnley has a lot to play for here to not get relegated. Newcastle does not, but Newcastle has been playing pretty well. Um, they've been up and down as well, but um, I like Newcastle to upset here against Burnley, even though Burnley has a lot to play for. Um, Burnley, it starts with Dwight McNeil and then Cornette. Those two are the top floor guys, in my opinion. And then for Newcastle, it starts with Bruno Guimaraes, um, unless, uh, what's his name? Trippier is starting here. Trippier may not start. We'll see. But if he starts, he's going to be a must, in my opinion. I think given his pricing, I love Trippier here. Um, and then Guimaraes, and then ASM, Fallon Wilson, and Almiron. They're all like strictly GPP, including Jolinton. So I think they're going to be relying on goals, but for high floor is Trippier and then Bruno Guimaraes. Chelsea versus Watford. Chelsea's at home, and as mentioned before, for Chelsea, it's all starts with their fullbacks, Alonso and then James. And then after that, if Mount starts, which I think you will, I mean, this is a very important game for them. Um, top three finish is at risk here. So Watford is, doesn't really have much to play for. Yep, doesn't have anything to play for, really. So Mount, Ziek, if they both start. But I definitely prefer Mount and then fullbacks for them. And then for GPPs, yeah, I mean, Lukaku, Conte, um, even Rudinger. I mean, if it's cheap, um, he is cheap as a fullback. So, but, you know, it's Chelsea, so... And then Watford, I don't think they're going to have it much uh, time to possess the ball against Chelsea, but it all starts with, let's see, Ken Sema um, and Joao Pedro. I said Joao Pedro probably first, and then Ken Sema, and they're cheap. Kalu and Sema are cheap, um, so they could be playable, but against Chelsea, I, I'm not going to touch that. All right, Crystal Palace against Manu. I'll go with Manu first. Starts with Fernandez and then Ronaldo. That's it. I'm not interested in anybody else. Maybe Alex Tellus taking corners into set pieces. And then Crystal Palace um, starts with, uh, where's his name? Eze. He's been playing really well since he came back from injuries. Eze. And then after that, it's Zaha, strictly GPP. 
and then Gallagher and AU and take it. These guys are strictly GPP, but SA is the only one that I'm interested in from the higher high floor standpoint. And then Leicester City versus Southampton. Um, Leicester City starts with James Madison. And after that, if he starts, yeah, I mean, he's a great play um, against the another great play for Southampton on the other side of the matchup and JWP, James Ward Prowse. So really those two central mid midfielders are going to go against each other. And then after that for Leicester City, it's going to be Karen Dewsbury Hall um, and then Harvey Barnes. These are all GPP though with Jamie, Har Jamie Vardy. I know Madison and Vardy have had a good connection since he Madison have, has come back and Vardy has come back from injuries. Um, but so we'll see what happens there. But for Southampton, like I said, it starts with JWP and then their fullbacks. I know Redmond has played well a um, few days ago. Oh yeah, a few days ago. Um, Ellie Nussi, I'm not a huge fan. So I think it's JWP and then everybody else for G GPP purposes. Liverpool, like I said, they could finish first um, in the EPL this season, but um, Man City is ahead of them by one point. But nonetheless, they, Man City could lose in case Man City loses and then Liverpool ties or wins. I mean, they could take over uh, Man City's record. So Man Liverpool here, I mean, it starts with their fullbacks, Robert, uh, TAA, and then Robertson. And then after that, Salah, Diaz, and Mane. If Salah not playing, okay, maybe Salah's injured. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to play Liverpool uh, here today. Um, and then Wolverhampton. It all starts with, um, what's his name? Nay, Pedro Neto. Pedro Neto has come back from injuries and he's been kind of, uh, you know, increasing his um, minutes and then also his form, improving his form rather. So that's going to be an interesting pick there, but he's the only one I'm interested in on the Wolves because Liverpool uh, is going to dominate the possession. Man City, again, for the same reason as Liverpool, um, they need to win this matchup to finish first and hoist that trophy. Um, but May, uh, Man City starts with, um, where is this, a KDB, Kevin De Bruyne. And then after that, maybe Rio Mars if he starts, but I don't think Mars is going to start. Um, after that, Phil Foden and then Zinchenko and then Joao Cancelo. Um, those guys are probably the high floor guys for Man City. And Aston Villa, like I said, Aston Villa is not going to dominate the ball. They're not going to have many possessions to kind of create scoring chances. So I'm not, you know, going to play a lot of Aston Villa guys. But if I had to pick, it'll be Buendia and then Lucas Digne. Digne has been uh, in charge of like a lot of set pieces as well. All right, last game on the slate is Norwich versus Tottenham. Like I said, Norwich does not have anything to play for, but Tottenham plays has a lot, everything to play for to qualify for Champions League next year. So Tottenham is going to, you know, give Norwich what, you know, what they want to get, uh, what they want to give. So Tottenham starts with Son and then Kane and then Kulusevsky. And then really that's about it. Emerson Royale and Sessegnon maybe like their fullbacks, but really it, it all operates within the top three of the formation there. So anyway, but in terms of the game stat goal scoring upside, I would definitely choose those uh, games that have more meanings for those teams, the things, the teams that I just mentioned. Um, and then after that, I would just find out um, if the starters um, are what they we we what we expected them to be. Otherwise, they could increase or decrease the goal scoring upside, in my opinion. Like, for example, if um, Liverpool has Salah starting, then Liverpool's goal scoring upside will go up. Um, so, you know, I think it, it all depends on the player um, who may say I set out uh, some of the some of the games and stuff. But anyway, so, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, but it's a 10 game slate. Like I said, it's going to be busy, busy, busy tomorrow morning. But yeah, reach out to me if you have any questions. Have a good one. Happy PL.